G'day guys, welcome back to another Primal Pursuit Mission. It's a lovely afternoon here in Auckland, New Zealand, and uh, shooting out for a bit of a dive at the local haunt, Turi Turi Matangi Island, and the aim today is to spare some snapper. Um, haven't got on some good snapper for a while, so, so I'm going to spend a bit of time setting a few burlies, having a good snoop around, and we'll see what we can find. Hopefully a nice snapper or two, and uh, yeah, we'll see what else we run into. Absolutely, mint afternoon, so pretty pumped. Let's do it. Welcome to Tiri Tiri Matangi Island, an awesome nature reserve in Auckland's Hauraki Gulf. Only a short boat ride away from the city, or for those keen enough, a reasonable paddle on a kayak from Whangaparoa Peninsula. Teeming with bird life on land, awesome underwater terrain, and rich with sea life. Very cool place to visit, and an awesome spot to dive. Today, I'm out hunting snapper. Right guys, well we've made it out, so yeah, just anchored up on a, a reef here out in the uh, open water. I'm just going to try a few spots and um, a few new spots as usual. I love to try new terrain and we'll just yeah, see what's around, see what's, see what's happening. Tide's just turned, it's about an hour incoming, so we've got all afternoon incoming tide. It should be uh, ideal conditions really, so yeah, get the wetsuit on, we'll get in, see you underwater. I load my spear gun as soon as I'm in the water. Always the first thing to do, you never know what fish are around that have been attracted by the boat noise dropping the anchor, such as kingfish. I make my first descent into the depths. There's some nice patchy weed here and sand, ledges, drop offs, a bit of bait fish around. It's looking promising. I scout the area and with not much happening, I find a nice paro. Black snapper, they call them. Plenty of these fish around. I hack it up and drop it off this nice ledge here, which looks very promising. A few smaller snapper milling around, and I'm just going to let that cook, let that sit for about 10 minutes, come back and see what's on it. I'm just here scouting some other ledges, drop offs. Nice big gutter here where you'd expect a snapper to be milling. Just a small guy here swims off few smaller snapper below but nothing sizable so all good it's time to check the burley I sink down about 10 meters back from the ledge creep along the bottom and peer over the side there's a big bronze whaler that's showed up interested in the burley below a few smaller snapper but nothing nothing worth shooting so back to the surface breathe up give it a few minutes and back down again. Same path, tracking along the bottom quietly, stealth, peeking over, and again it's just this big shark, but sometimes sharks can mean good snapper. You can find them swimming behind them, feeling more confident. A few kingfish and kahawai starting to show, a big stingray down below. It's quite a fishy spot. I'm down for one final dive. You never know what turns up. Creep along this ledge once more. But I'm just greeted with this big bronze whaler circling around where I've dropped this burly, this dead fish. It's very placid, the shark. It's just interested to see what's going on. Very cool, very cool. Shark swims off and I think it's time to move spots. Plenty of kingies around but they're just small, 
probably around 70 centimeters. You can see this fish has got a big trace hanging out of its mouth from the rod fisherman. Well guys, that was um, oh, a good start today. Nice to get the lungs, lungs going. Heaps and heaps of small snapper, but just nothing was coming in on the burly. Dove a few ledges around here, just yeah, nothing, nothing sizable coming in, just that big bronzy, a few small kingfish, so we've got to try another spot. I'm moving closer to the island, find a nice rocky spot with some current hitting it, nice terrain underwater, cracks, ledges, all the good stuff. It's very rough though, quite choppy, I'm in the white water and make my first dive down. There's a bit of bait fish milling around deeper, so I'm optimistic about seeing a kingy and sure enough here comes one swimming through with the kahawai school. Not a big fish, so I don't waste my time with it. But it's looking very good. I've shot some good kingies in this spot before. You can see the surge above, quite wild conditions. I make a few dives up and down, up and down. Hoping to tick off a kingfish, even though I'm after snapper today. And a welcome fish to be on the plate, beautiful eating. I sink down here, I'm just hovering above this kelp bed once again. Another king here comes in for a look. Just not quite big enough, probably still around that 70 centimetre size. And after a few dives I move on, nothing much happening there. And I spot the snapper from the surface just on the weed edge by the sand here, so I dive straight down. Hugging the reef here, I just make my way along slowly, creeping along, and peer over this ledge, and sure enough, the snap is still there. A nice little fish. I reach out and get a good shot straight into the snapper. I'm happy with the spear gun again, it's shooting straight. And I've got a first snapper on board for the day, pretty stoked. Not big. But that doesn't matter, still going to taste awesome. And it's about the hunt. It's not all about the size of the fish. Brain the fish, quick gut and gill, and it's obviously caused a bit of commotion as this big bronze whaler comes humming in here for a look. There are lots of big bronze whaler sharks around Teri Teri Matangi, so if you're not comfortable around sharks, I wouldn't recommend coming spearfishing here. Anyways, I set another ground bait in a nice little gut below and get into it. I'm down for my first look, and that bronze is just hanging around. It's very interested in what's going on, but I'm not too concerned. And peek over the sledge to see a nice couple of snapper down below, feasting on the kinna, and the big bronzy just cruising around. You can see its mouth drooping down. Perhaps some damage from a hook from a rod fisherman, I'm not sure. I throw a few more kinna into the area, give it another five minutes, and I'm back here creeping over this ledge into this lovely little gutter. The bronzy's still cruising around, very interested in what's going on. Quite a cool experience to be up in close with these sharks when they're so placid. I repeat this process, chucking more kinner over this ledge, trying to entice a bigger snapper in. Here I am creeping over. 
Ooh, and there's a nice snapper down below. Stretch out, ready to get a shot, but just doesn't quite turn broadside, giving me the best shot, so I hesitate, retreat slowly, and I'll try again. The shark just keeps hanging around the area, very interested in what I'm up to. I'm peeking over the ledge once more, look up, and the shark's <laughs> right there keeping an eye on me. Pretty cool. I decide to give the ledge a bit more of a rest this time, waiting about 10 minutes, throw a few more kinner, play with the shark a bit longer, and then I go in for one last look, surely something bigger on it this time. Creeping over, and there it is, a nice big snapper emerges from the kinnaburli, stretch out and get one right through the side of the fish, just drilling it. The snap takes off, it's not a kill shot, it's not a spine shot, it's flapping around, but I'm not too worried about the shark. For some reason, Bronzy's very, very rarely attack snapper. Perhaps it's the spines, they can be a bit poisonous. I'm not sure, but the sharks really don't care too much about the snapper. I get the fish up into my hands and now it's all over, and no need to worry about the shark, and it's a nice snapper, beautiful fish. Good healthy snapper, good kelpie, nice dark colours, probably around 12-13 pounds, very nice fish, pretty happy with that one. That was intense. So much whitewash, white water, strong current, surge, big shark just cruising around a meter or two from me. Um, yeah, it was just intense. I just could not bring my heart rate down, eh? Um, that's good. That's what I um that's why I do this. I love it, eh? Um, that was just yeah, that was intense. So oh, nerves are still going on this guy. Got this nice little snapper here. It was just parked up down on the sand um, really good visit here at the moment normally I wouldn't be able to see the bottom but I could just see him just milling in the current there down by the uh, the weed edge where the weed meets the sand so um, yeah dove down and lined it up and smacked him so um, that was a good start and then yeah set a little cannabis and stuff down in that gutter and um, well came to check it about 10-15 minutes after and I just saw this big tail saw this big snapper just disappeared down into the kelp so I was almost out of breath thought I'd just chill out I didn't chill out but um, did my best breathe it that I could and uh, went back down and got that shot off hopefully that's all on film here we go got this got this beautiful snapper beautiful fish so um yeah it's not huge maybe maybe 12 pounds so yeah <laughs> yeah stoked as so got what I came here for a couple of snapper it's only five o'clock now so still got a good hour or two of diving um, with light so actually might just go check what's happening on that ledge see if there's any action happening I presume everything's kind of gone away usually once you shoot a, a good snapper like that um, everything just buggers off but I'll go have a quick look otherwise yeah we'll probably moved spots that would be pretty good to top it off with a kingy or a cowboy something for some sashimi this week yeah we'll get this fish on nice and get back in stoked i jump back in for one last peek over the sledge to see if any other snapper have come back in once again just creeping creeping to the edge slowly peeking over the snapper could be midwater down the bottom could be coming in for a sniff anywhere slowly peering over they can hide so well in this kelp waiting waiting a couple of small ones then sure enough there's a good snapper down there I just wait sit patiently and then it senses me goes to take off and I pull a shot from the hip just not quite getting it skimming past the fish Ugh. missed that snapper 
just didn't quite get the shot off. Kind of did a side hip shot because it was just getting away. Should have pulled the trigger a bit earlier, but anyways, it's all good. I'm gonna try one or two last spots. See what else we can find. And then yeah, starting to lose a bit of light, so we'll have to make it uh, back home at some stage. All right, let's move on. Oh. oh, just played cat and mouse with those snapper for about an hour. There's a couple of good, good snapper coming in on my burley, so I thought I was in for a chance, but they outsmarted me. Pretty buggered, pretty hungry. See you back for a bit of a cook up. Alrighty guys, welcome back, we're home. Here's our two beautiful fish from yesterday. Smaller one here, and this fish here. Very nice snapper. Really fat, eh? All gutted yesterday, bled. Um, this is gonna be fantastic eating. Really nice dark color on it. Nice little hump head. Awesome, so we'll cut these up. Little victory knives. Might go for the big fish splitter today. Mixed with this little one here, quite like that smaller model. So we're just gonna come along there behind that head and gill plate, straight on that angle. So that leaves us with this big wing section here, which we will start to also right now. We're just gonna run that along that backbone come along those backbones this is a breeze when you've when you've had that fish on ice and that meat sets a lot better you can have a look in here it's set really nice you can see the color of it and that all just comes off and there we have it, one very nice fillet. So I'll do the same to the other side. Second fillet. I'm gonna get these wings off and then we're gonna do a, a bone broth with all the head, frame, what else is left. Right, here's our wings. Got a bit smashed up from the fight. The shaft went through. But, get the idea. We'll cover that with some herbs and spices and that just goes straight in the oven. Beautiful. Now there's lots of meat in these big snapper heads. Definitely something not to chuck out. We've got all this meat up there. Cheeks, all up under the jaw here. So I'm just gonna Downsize that a bit. That is going to go in the pot, and we will do a bone broth with that. So there we are. We've got our two fillets, wings. I'll do exactly the same for this fish. Then it's time to cook up. So now it's very common for us in New Zealand to skin fish. Smaller fish, when I'm cooking them whole, I like to leave the skin on, but can't be bothered scaling this. What we will do is keep this, add this into the bone broth because all that stuff on there is packed full of nutrients and good stuff so that'll all go in there um, getting the bones out of snappers pretty easy providing you've cut this off the ribs correctly there's basically this line of bones that runs about halfway down the fillet here so we just want to feel stop about there knife down either side
and again we'll just keep that all going to go in there nothing to go to waste and there we have it have a nice big fillet to be good all right so here's our ingredients for this uh fish soup obviously we've got our fish frames and heads and everything in there make sure you remove the gills otherwise that'll make it uh, bitter tasting olive oil celery parsley garlic some tomatoes bay leaves carrot onion white wine some tomatoes and juice thyme fennel seeds and i think that's it it's gonna be good Let's give this a taste test. Oh yeah. Oh it's beautiful. That is, that is pretty good, I must say. Dip my uh, vocals with about one centimetre of butter in there. You know me and my butter. Mmm. Highly recommend that, that was really easy to make and um, makes use of all those frames, heads and everything. Um, very minimal wastage so been guilty in the past but I'm going to try and make a bit more effort to um, use more of the heads and frames so yeah, this is a go. Cheers guys, hope you liked that episode. See you on the next one.